Good afternoon. Would you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your expertise? My name is Keetron Evans. Uh, I am the principal security researcher for InfoSec Institute. I also write and author courseware and do a lot of security research into things such as IoT security and cloud security. My background is I've been doing things like penetration testing, export development, and incident response, which is responding to uh, uh, big data breaches for the last 20 years. So for the layperson, what exactly is meant uh, by the expression IOT? So IOT, or it's, which is short for Internet of Things, basically refers to devices such as smart speakers uh, that we all have in our homes, uh, smart thermostats, smart refrigerators, even smart cars. So it's really, uh, think of smaller devices that allow us to automate day-to-day -day things that we do that have internet connectivity, uh, that we're able to command and interact with and harvest data from uh, over the internet. So my first question for you is, what are some of the advantages of having a more connected world? Well, so at home, we get a little more automated. Uh, we can order food without leaving the couch. We can schedule Zoom meetings without leaving the couch. Uh, we can do many, many other things via voice command. Uh, in business, some of the things that, that you see being revolutionized are things like asset tracking and inventory management. You know, as IoT devices pop up in warehouses and in data, uh, data centers and places like that, it automates a lot of the asset tracking and inventory management and allows us to do a lot more things, even like tracking sales and tracking uh, projections on what, what new materials we need to order or something like that. We can do a better job of that with real-time data from IoT devices. Also marketing, we use IoT data to uh, have more effective and strategic marketing. It drives real-time insights because we get insights from IoT devices that we just don't get from other data. Uh, for example, if a person, you know, orders stuff on the internet with their computer, like ordering uh, things such as, you know, groceries or ordering food or just ordering uh, consumable things, you get one piece of market data there. But if you have an IoT device that's listening constantly, they're hearing conversations, uh, such as if I said to you, oh, let's go around the corner to our favorite spot that we go to every weekend and get some ice cream. Well, that's a, that's a new piece of marketing data that I can pick up from the IoT device that would have never been visible uh, from my shopping habits online. So now that we've discussed some of the advantages, uh, what are some of the dangers or disadvantages of having a more connected world? Yeah, so this year, 2021, we've seen a lot of uh, talk about supply chain due to the solar winds attack that happened back in 20, the end of 2020. And when you think about it that way, you also have to think of your house or your, even if you're a consumer, uh, on the consumer side, your supply chain-esque risking, you know, there with these devices being interconnected, because if I can compromise one device, then I may be able to more easily compromise the devices that are connected to it. So that opens up a different type of risk there. The other thing too, is most of these IOT devices don't have the security engineering and the security forethought put into them when they're being made, because they weren't really, uh, when they were strategically being designed, they weren't designed to be secure. They were designed to be easy to put information in and get information out of. And uh, that's some of the inherent risk of uh, associated with IoT devices. So what are some of the specific attacks that can take place using IoT? Uh, I know during my preliminary research, I read about a hacker group that was able to turn a bunch of thermostats up to 99 degrees until a ransom was paid. So what sort of attacks like that, or even worse, can take place? So that's one type of attack. They can take control of the device. They can use it to, uh, to eavesdrop and pick up information, listen to what you're doing get access to your credit cards, your bank accounts. They may not get your credit card and bank account numbers, but just having admin control of that device means they can go into your Amazon account, for example, and order things and have it shipped to them. And you won't know it until, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit too late. So those are some some types of things that can happen. But in a, in a, in a more devastating uh, type of global situation, you mentioned 2016. Another big attack that you might want to research in 2016 was the Dyne DNS attack. And this is where basically a group of hackers used a piece of malware called Mariah to basically go out and scan the internet looking for IoT devices. And they got hundreds of thousands of IoT devices that they got control of. And they did that by using a list of passwords that was only 61 passwords. So they had a list of 61 passwords and they were able to get nearly a million devices 
with just that list of 61. And what they did with those devices is they attacked the DNS infrastructure, uh, a company, Dyn DNS, and affected the DNS of the East Coast. And just to, for the listener, what DNS is, is when you put in yahoo.com to your browser, your computer basically asks a DNS server, how do I get to Yahoo? And the DNS server responds and tells you how to get to Yahoo. Well, if that's taken away, you can't resolve or you can't get to websites and things like that on the internet the way that you normally do. And this affected uh, us on the East Coast big time. It was very devastating for about four or five hours there. Um, so that was a denial of service or what we call a distributed denial of service attack. And they used IOT devices to do it. Uh, and that was terrifying. So in your professional opinion, do you think IOT will become more secure over time, less secure over time, or is it going to kind of go side by side as technology tends to do? I honestly believe it. we're going to kind of stay where we are. Things are going to get more secure, but things are also going to get easier to hack. You know, I'm doing a lot of research now. As a matter of fact, I'm working on a research paper now uh, with uh, some some uh, with an Ivy League school where we're, we're publishing some research on machine learning and, you know, eventual AI as it relates to defending because a lot of vendors are trying to put AI into their products and as well as offensive, you know. So what we're finding is the, the bad guys that are out there, they're advancing just as quickly with machine learning and deep learning and, and AI technology as we are on the industry side. As a matter of fact, in some cases, they're advancing faster. So I, we think there's going to be the same thing that we see now where uh, as we advance our abilities to defend, they're going to advance their abilities to break in. So we think it's going to, we're kind of going to be plateauing for a while. Uh, I don't see that there ever is a case of where things are going to be so secure that we don't have to worry about it. So what are some of the steps that we can take to be more secure with our IoT devices since these things are becoming more and more commonplace? A couple of things come to mind. One is use strong passwords. You know, try to, if you have to use a password, pick something that's 15 characters or more. Um, that takes you out of the threshold of a lot of different types of attacks that we teach uh, in the classes that we teach. Another thing too is try to implement two-factor or multi-factor authentication to where your password alone is not enough to get into your content or your bank account or whatever it is. You have to also have a token or something like that. Uh, that's another thing to do. And also just general security awareness. Educate yourself on all the things that are out here. There's there's a lot of security awareness content that you can get access to now pretty easily uh, just for the average consumer, not for the IT person, not for the security person, just for the average consumer. Just start Googling security awareness and, uh, and, and look at the stuff that you get and just listen and pay attention to it. A lot of that content's out there. So is there anything you would like to add, anything I forgot to ask, or is there anything we should be on the lookout for coming up on the horizon? Uh, I, I've been experimenting with a lot of the IoT in cars recently, and there are some surprising things that I'm finding out about how what you can and can't do uh, with the IoT technologies in these cars once you get access to it. So that's something to be on the horizon for.